Yep. It's time for another episode. You ready to rock this one out? Yep. Let's do it. Okay. Um, well, now we're getting down into the beginning definitions and the understanding of who exactly um, our generation's Nazis are. We're learning. Yeah. Learning a lot. Learning a lot. Know your enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Know your enemy. So... Uh, I guess I just want to start off with reading um, two quotes, two quotes that I think that are very, very important, um, maybe for this topic that we're going to have right now. Okay. Um, the first one goes like this. If you know both yourself and your enemy, you can win numerous battles without jeopardy. Right? I like that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, the second one goes like this. So that's hope for almost a peaceful solution, right? Almost a peaceful solution? Mm -hmm. Mm, yes. I remain hopeful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A peaceful solution or maybe um, not a, a solution that is not as violent yeah. as what one would hope if you just go in, just guns blazing. Ah, I don't know who you are. Right? Um, and then the second quote is much more pertinent to what we're going to discuss today because all war is based on deception. Mm. Right, so these qu these two quotes are are um, Sun Tzu, yeah, Sun Tzu, who was the author allegedly of <laughs> of the art of war, right? And in in the thirteen chapters that he had, these yeah, these are basic definitions that all um, strategists, all military individuals, plus business individuals or any type of consultant or, or things like that, but um, would sort of kind of learn from because it's it's a uh, a tool that you can use to understand your opponent you know your enemy um and i like them right i like yeah. i like the fact that uh you have to know yourself and your enemy you have to know your strengths and your weaknesses right in order for you to um reduce any forms of casualties and casualties don't happen to be need they don't have to be physical, bloody, or anything like that. I mean, it could be even emotional or anything like that. But if you know who you are and, and who your enemy is, sure. yeah, you can sort of kind of uh, um, keep at peace. You can avoid a lot of misunderstanding, too. Yeah. Yeah. So all warfare is based in deception? Yeah, based on, on deception. deception. On deception. All warfare. So does that mean strategy? All warfare. You must deceive. Because the purpose of war is... To one up the other person. Yep, that's it. You know, it's like, who's on top? Me yeah. or you, right? How do you do that? <sighs> There's all sorts of ways that you can do that, right? Um, you can fake left, fake right, whatever. Like, if you look at sports and you see when people mm -hmm. um, sort of kind of like fake a pass that they're going someplace, but then they go the other way around. Mm -hmm. You know, those are like our modern versions of warfare. Um, um, this rolls into how there are two terms. There are two terms that uh, you believe are game changers. Game changers, yeah. yeah. I think they need to be uh, introduced because I think for someone who's just learning about this, this is really unveiling uh, a lot of what the problem is. A lot of what... Um, where it breaks down as far as people being um, misunderstanding and being upset. Uh, inter let's introduce the first one. Okay. Okay. Well, first I'm going to rewind a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I and think it, it piggybacks uh, on what yeah, you were saying. Because we, we first have to define, you know, who who the world, um, who our new Nazis are. Who Who is the world's new Nazis? And the world's right. new Nazis are defined as ISIS, right? right? Or Islamists, right? So you have ISIS, ISIL, Daesh, right? Any type of radical fundamentalist group who is wanting to impose their ideology on everyone else, right? These are the enemies, right? right? These are the enemies that we must understand. These are the enemies that we must learn what it is that drives them, you know, what it is that um, motivates them to, to get out of the bed 
and do the crazy shit that they do. Because they're trying to learn about us so that they can come in and do the same thing and uh, infiltrate and and yeah. basically take yeah. us down. Yeah, it's uh it's uh it's a, it's ebb and flow, right? Mm-hmm. It's ebb and flow, but um uh ISIS is the enemy. Mm-hmm. ISIS is the new Nazi, mm-hmm. right? Radical fundamentalisms or radical fundamentalists those are our generation's new new Nazis. Like we need to really sort of kind of all come to terms and all come to agreement that um, we have to name it and call it what it is, right? Right. I'm gonna always uh, creep back on my buddy. Yeah, he's not my buddy, but I'm gonna call him my buddy, <laughs> right? Majid, right? Um, where he always says we have to get get our asses out of this Voldemort effect, and we have to name who the enemy is, right? Because once you name something. You now have power over it because now you can control the definitions and you can control mm-hmm. how you manipulate this specific scenario. So, um, and the, you can rally a community against a common enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a flag that you can plant over there, and you can say, "Well, they already fly. They already fly their flag, mm-hmm. right? They fly it and they fly it proud. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody else really flies their flag mm-hmm. because we're just sort of kind of confused right now." Mm-hmm. Um, but. ISIS, ISIL, Daesh, radical fundamentalists, Islamists, right? Mm -hmm. They are all basically militant groups who happen to be transnational, right? So you have to understand that a transnational group Mm -hmm. has no state, has no boundaries, right? There is no base home for them, right? Which means that they can pop up anywhere Anywhere. and everywhere, right? And that is uh, uh, an enemy that we're not used to, right? We're not used to, you know, whack-a-mole, you know, whack-a-mole <laughs> type of groups <laughs> all over That's the place. That's great. So yeah. up here, try to control yeah. here. Boop. Just uh, come up another place. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's fun playing it in Chuck E. Cheese when you get to, <laughs> you know, hit the hit the little mole and then all of a sudden you get, you get, um, um, uh, what are the little things that come out? The little gift, not the gift cards, but the tokens. Little tokens or tickets. Yeah, you, you know, so you can so go you can buy shitty uh, prizes. A, a little cheapy toy, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, but but ISIS, basically, Islamists. Yeah, um, they are a transnational organization. They're not even an organization. They're just a a, a, a transnational criminal group. Thirty-one countries in the past thirty days. What? Rewind that. 31 List countries. List of are. Islamic terror events. Oh, okay. In the last 30 days, mm-hmm. of terror events have happened in 31 countries. Okay. So there have been there have been criminal acts, right? Criminal acts that have caused terror within communities. In how many? 31 countries. 31 countries. There are 231 attacks. Okay. Eight. Uh, 1,883 people killed, uh, 2,200 people injured, 54 suicide blasts, and these have gone on in 31 countries. So just to uh, to give some numbers to your statement about this being not a centralized thing. This is happening and popping up all over. Yeah, whack-a-mole. So there's yeah. whack-a-mole. Whack-a-mole is just, it, it, they're popping up everywhere, right? Even though that you can see a lot of these happen to be within... Um, Muslim nations. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a couple of them within Western nations. You got the United States. It happened when we talked about Orlando, and mm-hmm. then there is another incident in France a couple mm-hmm. days later. Yeah, yeah. So this is we need to understand. Well, I, I'm going to say we, all of us, everybody who enjoys freedom of speech and freedom of thought, that we need to understand that this is a political, this is a religious political ideology that their whole belief system is based off of this form of physical jihad right because in their opinion this is their duty right Mm -hmm. to impose their will upon us right and we need to understand this because um uh this has been happening for 1400 (laughs) centuries you know Um, this is the third jihad yeah, the third yeah, jihad. two major in the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, one in uh, Arabia. Yeah. When they moved out of Fertile Crescent and started uh, establishing uh, places in the Middle East. Yeah. And then the second was when the Turks invaded the Balkans. Okay. And captured Constantinople in 1453. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Rewind that back. When was the first one? Uh, I don't have that date. Okay. Well, no, we don't need a date. So the first jihad was... 
was a long time ago. Mm-hmm. The second jihad was not so long ago, but it was another long time 1453. ago. 1453. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now we and now we have what I guess some people are trying to define as mm-hmm. the third jihad. Like, yeah, but there's also jihads that are just um, not not declared as actual war, but it's any religious duty of a Muslim to maintain the religion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It can be a holy war, but it almost always includes arms, taking mm-hmm. arms against someone. It doesn't have to. Um, but it's basically a struggle against wrongdoers and to resist infidels or yeah. the kafir. Yeah. That's, so it can you can have a jihad anywhere. Right. It doesn't have to be. A, a, we, no one votes on it and says, okay, we're. <laughs> yeah. This is what we're gonna do. Yeah. There's is no it? war room. A, no. Yeah. yeah no. There's no war room where you know you can say that. Yeah. There's a. There's you know. There's the generals. The generals for you know this specific type of jihad are meeting up over. Um, at um, some specific address, and then they're talking about how they're going to run some shit. Right? Yeah. There's no war room within this belief system. These are people uh, taking action uh, to fulfill what they feel is a religious duty. Exactly. Right. And that is probably the 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 key term, the understanding that what I have is that is that a jihad, or you have a physical jihad, is a violent. It, well, how, how do they define it? A violent jihad is a physical... The goal no. is to maintain the religion. And it it doesn't have to um, mean to take up arms, but it almost always does. And it's also it's it's included in both the Shia and Sunni ideology. Yeah, yeah. yeah I didn't even delve that deep into it. Because I couldn't even read my writing because I kept saying <laughs> physical. But jihad, violent jihad is a personal religious duty. Right. right, and that's right. the that's the key term because personal, personal it is it means that within the system they impose it on the individual, and an individual can declare yes. jihad, right? Yes. And then they can get their own little crew, their own little gang, right. or, or whatever it is, and then they say, well, this is our jihad, and we're getting ready to you know crush some shit, right? right? Which is why you see whack a mole popping up all over the place, okay. right? So cool. Now we understand who the enemy is, right? And our enemy now are our generation's Nazis, you know, um, happen to be Islamists, right? Correct. And they have a specific objective because they want to return to pure Islam. This is what they believe. They said they want to return to a pure form of Islam, which they want all the world to be run under. Correct. That's their, that's their shit. The whole right? world. Yes. Yeah. And now, now we're going to delve off into <laughs> some of the some of the components that um, that sort of kind of um, make up this system, because mm-hmm. we're just gonna deal with two today, because there's a, there's a lot there's a there I <laughs> I thought I knew a little bit about this belief system, and the more that I read about it, the more that I I'm like I have no fucking clue. Yeah. This is it. This and system. Most people don't. Yeah, this system is um I I can't lie, it is a genius system, Islam. Right, the belief system in itself, it is genius because it it has devices, right? It has devices mm-hmm. and and methods that are built inside of it to protect itself. Right. Right? You can't fuck with it. Right? You can't fuck with it without you basically fucking with your own system. Right. Right. That I, I That's religion. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there there's some very pertinent ones that we're gonna talk yeah. about. Yeah, no, 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 no. You can't say that well what do you mean when you say that that's religion? I think a lot of religions have uh built into their ideology or a reason that you cannot refute them. Mm. That's another topic. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm looking at this. I'm I'm starting to look at well, you know, like I said, religion to me it it, it is a living thing. Right, it is something that lives and it exists, and then people who follow mm-hmm. it don't even know that they're following something that lives. It's bigger than them, mm-hmm. right? It's like a super organism that is functioning all over the place, sure. right? Okay. Yeah, I think we had that that chat last time about it being a super super organism, but this super organism called Islam has um, protective mechanisms built inside of it, and two of them are abrogation, mm-hmm. and I think. It's tequila. Tequila. Yeah, I always want to say tequila. Pop, 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 pop. Yeah, I wish I had some tequila right now. But um, yeah, tequila. So, what, what did I, you? I kind of want to step 
step back for a minute because I know um, I know what we say is going to piss a lot of people off because there are a lot of people that are saying this is racist and you know you're not you're not um, first off you can't be racist against a religion right, 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 right. Yeah. I'm just saying I know that yeah. people are going to come across this yeah. and hear this and be very offended yeah. because they're not hearing um, that we're not attacking uh Muslims were attacking this ideology. An idea. Yes. Yes. Um, so, so you have a lot of people that are going to say, but Muslim uh, faith, Islam, Islam is based on peace. Actually, the word Islam is derived from the word peace. It also means surrender and submission. Mm -hmm. And so you have this um, several verses in the Quran that are based on compassion and love and peace. And so how do you marry that with the ideas in the Quran that are also uh, promoting uh, uh, death uh, and, and, and punishment and murder of people that do not agree with you? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. And that's where we get into the, the subject of the abrogation mm -hmm. and the nullifying of... So you're talking about moderate Muslims, yes, versus radical, right? Islamists, because people that are moderate or people that are peaceful are, are taking those verses and living their lives according to this very beautiful teaching. Mm -hmm. um, but there are also people that are hearing the later verses that are applying their uh, actions on following those verses. Mm -hmm. So you almost have a spectrum within this ideology of what people are adopting and we're not attacking um, people's uh, adoption of, of the ideas we're attacking the ideas themselves yeah yeah so okay I see what you're saying yes so we're discussing the ideas we're discussing the concepts right and then we're discussing um, the people that are following the um, um, the concepts and then the ideas that are causing the most harm yes. to people in this world right, right now, right? right? I mean, this is how we have to level up our intelligence, right? We have to level up our intelligence by first being able to understand nuance, right? right? You have to understand that there there's shades, right? There's shades, there's interpretations, there's all sorts of things. And um, um, right now we don't have to talk about, I mean, we can talk about the historical fact that Yes, people in the West did do bad things, right? You know, yes, people in the West did go and they bombed people and there was slavery and then there was all these horrible, horrible things that happened, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, slavery existed in, in America for, um, you know, a few hundred years and then you had to get back into some Jim Crow shit, right? And then Jim Crow shit to get to the civil rights era, you know, but then you're seeing this forward progress. There's some type of progress that is continuously happened in the west right, right. now we right. live in a time right now in the west where um we can all for the most part talk shit yeah right everybody yeah. might be on mm, they might not be all on equal playing fields be it um intellectually be it financially um or things like that but for the most part because of the rule of law mm -hmm. that we have based off of man mm -hmm. um we are all fair right we we should all we we are all essentially treated for the most part, fair. We got problems. I will not say that we don't have problems, of right? Course. Because every every family has problems, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you you have some crazy fucking uncles, <laughs> right? You have some batshit crazy aunts, right? Mm -hmm. You know, but we we have to start looking at the West or Western culture um, as a massive family that agrees upon the same rules, right? right? And we agree upon the rule of law, right? And our rule of law. Um, basically allows us to have certain rights and right. the main rights are the the freedom to think how you want to think and the freedom to say what you want to say right right those those are just the the three things that i'm always going to constantly heart back on whenever i'm discussing um this specific type of topic right here of course yeah you know so so now we have this group right or we have a group mm -hmm. and it is still built within the system of Islam where you have these two these two concepts mm -hmm. and um, what did you find on, on, on the two on like abrogation let's talk so about abrogation, abrogation first. is something that is very interesting to me because it, it it's 
tries to explain the difference between this peaceful version and this jihadi, uh, a war warlike version. Mm. Um, and what the 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 definition of abrogate um, means to uh, declare former statements null and void. When you talk about when I when I delve into uh, abrogation as far as the Quran. It mentioned later pronouncements of the prophet declared null and void the earlier pronouncements. So you, you, have, you have to Donald Trump that shit. Right? <laughs> I am. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so basically, you had these uh, very peaceful assertions in the beginning, mm -hmm. these, these uh, uh, psalms, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and then later on, you have this, like you said, these built-in rules that it says, okay, the, the, mo the more recent is going to trump no pun intended, the, the previous mm -hmm. <laughs> statements. So, um, I don't know, maybe Muhammad got some more life lessons and, and experiences and decided that his initial philosophy was not not uh, cutting it or not how he wanted people to live. So the later pronouncements, the later uh, uh, statements are a lot more warlike. Mm. And those are supposed to kind of replace and make null and void the previous so, in a sense, those are the new playing rules. Mm, it's almost yeah. like, okay, well, we, we used to do this, but this is, this is obsolete now. This is the new playbook. Mm -hmm. But the people that are saying, oh, no, but this is a very peaceful uh, ideology are still clinging to those original ideas. Mm -hmm. Not understanding that they are eventually, essentially null and void by this idea of abrogation. By the commands based off of this specific belief system. Correct. Right. And so the ones that are uh, acting upon these newest uh, almost edicts are actually the ones fulfilling the, the prophet's um, ideology the most accurately. Which is why they believe, this, yeah. This. So if you literally read the words in, in, in the text, right, the people that are actually acting like Islamists right now mm -hmm. are honestly following yes. what Islam is. Because remember that all the words are to be taken um, uh, verbatim. Yeah. Not, not a... Because uh, it's the literal word literal, yes, of... literal. Yeah, yeah. Of, of Allah, which was translated or which was told to Muhammad. Muhammad right? Yes. Yeah, so... Yeah, that's... I... Yeah, that's a... <laughs> that's a... That's a... That's, that's some gnarly shit. That's really right. gnarly because yeah. I, I, I would think that not all Muslims believe that, mm. right? Yeah. Obviously, I mean the documentary we watched today was about an individual that did subscribe to the earlier version of a peaceful form, mm -hmm. and this was such a very important part of his, his uh, culture upbringing and uh, core beliefs. Mm -hmm. But then the individual was gay. And so to marry those ideas with a newer version uh, of basically his own religion telling him that he is punishable by death. Yeah, they would throw him off a cliff. They would sh throw him off a cliff. Yeah. So, um... Just because of the way that he was born. Yeah. 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 So those are not the individuals we have issue with. It's the ideology of this newer version, or these newer uh, verses that are, are promoting uh, the intolerance... Uh, and uh, hate. Yeah, that's that's why that 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 system, um, or or you know the whole abrogation, the taf tafsir tafsir. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if I'm saying it right because I don't speak Arabic. You know, but think, you know, I'm so glad that I have access to wiki <laughs> and the internet, and I can look up all this stuff and actually you know inform myself. Mm -hmm. um, but. But to see and to read read about it, yeah, um, there's a lot more that you can even go go down because they, in order for you to be or in order for there to be an interpretation of the Quran, mm -hmm. right? Because that's what tafsir or tafsir literally means. It means interpretation, mm -hmm. right? So when you are explaining, you're basically explaining a revelation in a book, right? Mm -hmm. And and then what you're doing now is you're taking your mind, right? Because you have to take the mind that you have right now, and then you have to actually have to walk down this, this methodology. They have a specific methodology, and it's like 15 steps, 
right? There's like 15 steps that you have to go through to, to even to be qualified to understand the Quran, right? Mm-hmm. Right, and this is that's another that's another barrier of entry right there for mm-hmm. all other people who want to read this specific book, mm-hmm. right? Because now you have to look at the words in the historical content, mm-hmm. right? And not everybody knows that because why? There are certain groups of people that actually destroy the history of um of this specific system, right? right? You know, so if you have no roots to go back to, um, how can you study? Or, or even interpret or translate what it is that you're saying that no, this is the word and this is this has been translated now, right? So, this new translation that I am giving you right now trumps the old one because yeah, he really you know maybe was meaning it like in this way, mm-hmm. right? And that's some shady shit to me. Yeah. But because it's built in the system, you can't doubt it because it's built in the system, mm-hmm. right? It uh, yeah, I, I just. When I was reading that, I was just like wanting to punch something because I'm like, no, you rigged the game with that with that one rule right there. You know, that's just one rule that you rigged the game. You rigged the game in your favor at all times. And then you also rigged the game in whoever reads this in the future um, so they can be winning, too. Right. Yeah. They just Charlie Sheen this shit right here <laughs> with um, with one one specific concept of abrogation. Yeah. Right. Cancel out all the old shit. The new stuff is based off of the interpretation. Yeah, he didn't know. You know, he didn't know because, you know, we know more than what, what they knew back then. And this is what they literally mean. Right. Mm-hmm. Fucking Charlie Sheen, that shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the that methodology of even having to translate it, which means that you still, every time that you're reading this, you can't even read it as an individual. You cannot even read the book as an individual or any of these books as an individual and pull in your own interpretation Honestly, you might as well just skip to the end and see what. Mm Mm-hmm. What? What? Skip to the end. Skip to the end. Oh. (laughs) I keep saying the most recent because that's the way it was explained. Um, I'm not sure if it's that cut and dry, but Mm -hmm. um, maybe the more uh, recent historically um, in in the book. Yeah. Fifteen fields. You have to master fifteen fields, Mm -hmm. right? Fifteen fields. I. (laughs) <laughs> 15 fucking fields you have to master just to be able to translate or interpret the Quran, right? The first one is classical Arabic. Mm-hmm. Okay, classical Arabic, right? I don't know how many people can speak classical Arabic. Is there a name for the individuals that do complete these 15? Ah, I didn't even look to see because I didn't really care about that. Like, yeah. who would be these individuals that can do it? Because you know what? You can probably even lie because it's so simple to lie because people don't even understand what it is that they're reading and you can probably just walk in which is probably why we got this crazy stuff now Mm -hmm. right so you can say no mm, this is actually um what it means right and Mm -hmm. if you don't believe me um death because i am telling you that this is the the translation of it yeah but uh, i have to look that one up to see if there are people because i thought they called them um uh translators too (laughs) but like uh they willed a lot of uh, fear influence then yeah an author of a test fear oh the author are called the mufasir okay yeah the mufasir i don't know what that means <laughs> right yeah so those who are the authors of test fear are called the mufasir now i might be wrong because i don't understand this language mm-hmm. which is probably why i would if i was born in a country like that i would have to just follow what someone says because for one i'm probably illiterate um i can't really read the book or if i do read the book I don't know what it means, but then I'm being brought up in a culture that believes this type of system right mm-hmm, here, mm-hmm. right? Um, another thing, it's an argument from authority, right? Which is off the rip, a uh, 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 fallacy in thinking. It, it is just a fallacy in thinking, and and we need to understand this this one right here, because if you can rig the game, I don't know how you can ever trust um, people who subscribe to this belief system right because at any time you can say this is the translation right of it right Mm -hmm. so that would be uh, a perfect segue into the next term or the uh, takia yeah yeah tequila (laughs) yeah that's that's the whole issue is the trust yeah the takia what did you discover on the takia so this is islamic Dissimulation and or legal dispensation whereby a believing individual can deny faith or conceal religion when under threat 
persecution or compulsion. And this um, practice is accepted both by Shia and Sunni Islam. So basically, if you're a non-believer, they can lie to your face about their beliefs, their um, agenda. It's, it's, it's uh, recommended that they do. And what that does is it enforces this uh, secretive, non-integrative uh, part of a culture and a community that wants to live as a subset of another community. Yeah, they want to develop a parallel system. Right. Yeah. Which is part of the genius. That, that That's why um, the more that I, I'm reading about this, the system, this specific type of system, is, it's, it's designed to grow and eat and, and live in hostile environments. Right. That's this is like this is like um, um, one of those little one of those little virus spores. It's exactly, yeah. it's almost like an insidious takeover. Yeah, a slow growing, uh, under the radar takeover of yeah. a host. Yeah, which is the host country. Yeah, right? the host nation, yeah. host country, host village, um, and yeah, don't get butt hurt because I'm referring to um, a belief system right. in the same capacity or the same aspect as a, a a virus or a living organism because I'm I'm talking about it in 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 a way that you have to look at this this is a living entity, right? You have to look at Islam and Islamism as something that is alive and it has components that are built inside of it that it needs to to be able to live and thrive off of, right? Mm-hmm. So you have to look at it like that. And the only comparisons that we can have or other biological entities, right? Like, um, what is that one? The, the extremophiles, right? Have you heard of the extremophiles? Mm-mm. Well, <laughs> they didn't think that life could exist in these really hot... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's where a lot of our... Uh, we've learned a lot. Like, for example, um, our whole uh, molecular biology where we can do um, DNA amplification was was uh, came about because they found these bacteria that would live in these really hot springs at these temperatures they didn't think like mm-hmm. could live they could and now we we exploit them to do our experiments mm-hmm. um, and there's you know that's just one example but anyway yeah like, so no using that that is exactly yeah that is exactly what this system mm-hmm. this system is right here because now within it because of the environment that it it was built on and constructed in Mm -hmm. it has created these protective mechanisms Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. two of these protective mechanisms we're talking about right now abrogation Mm -hmm. right um the ability to uh, all new rules trump old rules Mm -hmm. right and um uh (laughs) taquilla yeah (laughs) taquilla which basically means I can lie to non-believers. Yeah. Right. And then the reason why that they were able to do that too is like what you're saying. It was a protective mechanism because there was a time when this system they mm-hmm. were they were the minority. They were persecuted. So at yeah. that time, you said, you know what? It's okay. You can deny your faith to these people. It's okay if that saves your skin. Yeah. Um, but now I think it's more of a of a. Um, I see it more negative because it's a way of lying to people and in infiltrating their community without truly genuinely wanting to be part of the community for mm-hmm. a community uh, mutual mm-hmm. uh, mutuality, but more of we're going to take over. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was rude. The I'm phone sorry. was all on and bing, 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 bing. Let me make sure my ring is off. Right. There you okay. Go. Yeah. So the mutual community. <laughs> <laughs> There's, it's, it's almost like saying there's actually no real uh, desire to live harmoniously in the new community. It's all just uh, a front for usurping that community. Yeah, you have a mask, right? The mask, the mask that you initially developed was to protect yourself from persecution, right? So right. you did not want to be persecuted, therefore you did not give up anything based off of your your belief system your right. ideology right right and then now it's morphed into um we live in a connected world right we live in an integrated world that means the same thing actually mm-hmm. right you know so so we live in a global world mm-hmm. right and and now um it's built off of trust 
right? Yes. So you have to be able to trust exactly. what people say. Mm -hmm. And if your ideology or your belief system has a component like this in it to where you can lie to a non-believer and a non-believer is anybody who doesn't believe in mm -hmm. in um, in uh, uh, Islam, mm -hmm. right? That's a lot of people in this world. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people. In, and, and I know we have um, allies, if we want to call them that, mm -hmm. right? You know, but we have groups of nations that we actually work with and, and we integrate with in different ways and now I'm thinking about all the politicians that are going there and they're technically non-believers, right? All of them are all non-believers and they're talking to these groups of people, yeah. right? That happen to subscribe to this system right here, mm -hmm. right? How do you trust them? That's the problem. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, this breeds more distrust. Yeah. you know. Once you understand that this is a thing, hmm? it's it's so damaging because... You can't really trust the neighbor down the street that you think is really nice and says hi to you at the grocery store and blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Right? It so it starts breeding this this air of uh, yeah, paranoia yeah. and and distrust, which only further um, isolates groups and creates this tension. Yeah, and us first them. Yes. Right. Yes. I don't know. I mean. The only way that I can see like something a, a rule or a or a scheme like this actually breaking now is for one maybe to denounce sharia law right or sharia right you would have to because it, it doesn't mesh well with the west well it 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 uh, enforces the separateness and the uh almost like you have these little islands of, mm -hmm. of non-america in america oh yeah the right. parallel systems right. yeah yeah, this is this. These two, they're uh, they're the game changers. Yeah, like as you far said, as understanding. Yeah, the, uh, thus the, far, <laughs> the fact that new rules trump old rules, mm -hmm. which is cool, right? You that would be cool because you can look at other belief systems where the old rules were super gnarly and bad, mm -hmm. right? Like in in Christianity. When you read the Old Testament, yeah, you got Old Testament, New yeah, Testament, yeah, you Old get a Testament, friendlier, friendlier, New Testament, uh, right? New Testament. Yeah, you morphed. Yeah, it was yeah. like, whoa, wait a minute, you know, like say if it was the opposite, you know, it's basically the same. It's the same. Yeah, right? if it, it was is the, the opposite, same. we probably wouldn't be talking right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> but these rules are basically the same as in Christianity, which means that um, New Testament trumps Old Testament, right? Um, but in the Old Testament, they were killing gay people. Mm -hmm. Right, they were stoning women. Mm -hmm. They were doing bad things like that. Mm -hmm. That is the difference between um, um, that system mm -hmm. of we do Christianity because they're all Abrahamic belief systems, right? So they all have their origins from one specific person, mm -hmm. and then you have another system where it's gotten more violent as history has gone. And decrease civil liberties, decrease mm -hmm. human rights. Yeah, basic human rights. Yeah, well. These, these two, and I'm going to rehash the opening of um, uh, what I read by Sun Tzu, right? Is that um, if you know both yourself and your enemy, you can win numerous battles without jeopardy. And we also need to understand that all warfare is based on deception. Mm -hmm. And these two rules right here are... Um, deception is built inside of them. I mean, that that's it. So this is letting you know um, that this system right here it might not really be a religion of peace. Um, this is a, a um, this is warfare, right? These these rules these right here. Warfare, yeah. But it also helps us become closer to understanding of what we're dealing with. Yeah. Because there's a lot of confusion out there. There's a lot of mm -hmm. fear. There's a lot of, well, you know, I know this person. They're Muslim and they're very peaceful and they're a wonderful person. How could, you know, you say this about their religion? Again, we're not saying about the people. We're talking about this ideology in which abrogation has led us to this um, climate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to talk to some some uh, Muslims out here in yeah, in San Diego to see. I want to pick their brains uh, about these two terms because I can probably learn a lot more um, from them. 
who knows? They might not even under- know of these. That's what know I'm of these. suggesting. Yeah. And I, I believe there's a spectrum of understanding of the new and old laws. Yep. And the adoption of the new and old laws and one's personal faith and one, one's personal um, way of life. Yeah, well, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Because um, um, this type of intelligence right here, it, it must be spread. Yeah. Uh, so now, um, recap again. Two terms that are considered game changers, right? Especially when you know the objective of um, Islamism is returning to pure Islam, Mm -hmm. right? And then they do this through violent jihad because violent jihad is a personal religious duty. Mm -hmm. So with this personal religious duty that they have to um, carry out, um, they can, their, their new rules, which tend to be more violent or their new interpretations or their new translations of the Quran, um, tend to be much more violent than the old one right and the new the new interpretations trump the old ones yes. right because there was some master or there was some individual or groups of individuals that mastered 15 areas <laughs> um within this specific system right here and the last one would be um takia right and that is another hard one to wrap our heads around because this means that a muslim can lie to a non-believer, right? So, two terms. <laughs> Abrogation, mm-hmm. which means the new trumps the old, and takia, mm-hmm. which means that I can lie to you, and that's cool, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, we'll close out. Close what on. do you think? Do you have anything else you want to talk about? Uh not not yet. We'll talk about the five pillars and then the sixth pillar being a uh, jihad at yeah, another yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which I think is kind of... The reason I bring it up is because the five pillars are based on those older versions, the older uh, verses, and then the sixth is jihad, which is obviously more... Oh, oh is that a recent? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we got the five pillars mm-hmm. plus the one. beautiful pillars. It, yeah. And I'll talk about how we should all kind of learn and be inspired from them. And then the sixth unofficial pillar is jihad. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Well. And then maybe we'll have links to the websites that inspired this talk today. Uh, maybe. No, there's always going to be links. You always have to have links. Because um, um, when you are you functioning <laughs> in, <laughs> uh, what is this? playing with the open source intelligence agency yeah open source intelligence agency is that yeah we we have to be completely transparent with all of our information and if we're wrong um yeah let us know yeah let us know um but please bring facts you know please bring evidence um or show the evidence um and this is a collective learning process mm. right yeah well we're learning together and we're mm, other people to learn together. Yeah, but we us. need to learn quick because this this system right here is designed to eat our lunch. Yep. Right. It yep. is designed to eat our lunch and eat everybody else's lunch, which is why you had how many attacks again in the past thirty days? There was over what? I don't know, eleven, eighteen hundred people were killed. Past thirty days there were eighteen 18- 183 people killed. Yeah, 1800 over 1800 people killed in the past 30 days because there are some people that believe in this system and they believe that it is their personal duty to wage physical jihad. Right. Yeah. And uh that needs to stop because we need to level up our intelligence. Yeah. Now I'm amped again <laughs> and I'm ready to go punch something. <laughs> All right. We'll oh, punch wow. some information and learn more. Yeah. Because that's the weapon. Yeah. Yeah. But then you just got to remember, this this shit cannot happen in our house. Not in my house. Not yeah. In my house. <laughs> All right. Take care. <laughs>